Hey everybody, it's Jacques Adia. If my voice doesn't sound great, I've got a wee bit of a cough, so I know that may be why, but anyway, I'm here to talk about a specific issue, and the title of this video includes the word rant, and I, I don't really want this to be a rant, but it will probably turn into a rant, because it's a topic that I've wanted to make a video about for a while now, and I've even tried a couple of times, and I'm just, I'm never satisfied with it, so I'm going to try, and this time is going to be the one, it's going to be the magic, magic third time charm uh, video, that will be basically the epitome of the point that I'm trying to make, which is all about the topic of the word retcon. The word retcon gets used a lot, and a lot of the time it's not used right, and I've like thought about it a lot and it bugs me. It's just a little, it's just one of those little things that bugs me. You know when you have something that just, you can't get off your mind even though it's so insignificant and your life could easily go on ignoring it? Like, if people want to misuse the word retcon, it's not my damage, it's not going to burn my house down, but I just can't get this thought out of my head and I just want to make a video where I talk about the subject of the word retcon because I just want to try and get, put some cards on the table. I just want to try and help people maybe use it right because it just bugs me when people don't and in the process, I don't know, if I get something wrong you can point out to me where I may be, where my reasoning may be flawed, but I'm going to try and lay out everything as well as I can, and I hope you see where I'm coming from, and I hope at the end of this video, and any, and the end of any comments that we may discuss in the video afterwards, if you would like, you don't have to take part in that, it's up to you, but hopefully we will just have a better idea of what that word means, and what, how to use it. So, you know, this is going to be a good video, fun times all around. That said, I'm going to use some case studies, so um, nothing too particularly spoilery unless you haven't seen the original Star Wars films. I'm going to mention them and a big event from them, so Star Wars, that's a, kind of a spoiler warning. And the biggest reason I'm making this video is, of course, because of how the word is misapplied to a couple of specific events in the Kingdom Hearts series. Kingdom Hearts has the word retcon thrown at it a lot, sometimes it deserves it, sometimes it doesn't, and I just want to try and establish the why, the whens and the wheres and the whys of when, this all sort of how it works, so. But there are two specifically big examples I'm going to talk about, so basically, massive Kingdom Hearts spoilers. Not for Kingdom Hearts 3, obviously, because it's not out yet, but, you know, watch out for that. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way and that's kind of the intro to the video sort of sorted and done, let's just get on to it. So first of all, what does the word retcon mean? In case you don't know and you're wondering or you're curious or you just you don't know the knowledge and I wanna, you want me to inform you, then uh, the word retcon can easily be divided into retcon. That is literally what it is, ret and con. And the ret stands for retroactive, the con, continuity. Retroactive continuity. It's a storytelling trope term, or more accurately, a story writing trope term. Basically, the idea is that if you are writing a story and you establish a certain piece of information in that story, maybe a name or a date or maybe something a bit more uh, important, like an event or a character. Basically, if you have a piece of information in a story and you undo it later on, because stories often happen in multiple installments, so you write a sequel to your book, or you make a prequel to your video game, or you just have like a little TV series spin-off or something. Point is, when you add on to stories, you can basically run the risk of undoing, or more to the point in terms of retcons, overwriting what you've previously established. So for a random example off the top of my head, there's a guy called Bob, and his tragic backstory is that his father died in a terrible event uh, four years ago, and he's like, uh, it's had a massive impact on him as he goes through life. But then like, in the sequel, this is like an extreme example, you will never see an example like this, but let's say there was a sequel to the book, so, I don't know, so in the, the Death of the Monkey Killers 2, he then goes over his tragic backstory again, and he mentions how that he was heavily affected by the fact that his father died at birth. His birth, not his father's birth. But yes, if Death of the Monkey Killers 1 established that his father died, like he knew his father and he lived with him and he had a big relationship with him up until he died like a few years ago, but then a later story changes that and has him establish that his backstory is actually that his father died when he was like super young and he never knew him, then that's a massive change and that would be a massive retcon. So that's basically an idea of how a retcon works. It just overwrites what was previously established. This was supposed to be the case, but now it's not. This character was supposed to have red hair, but now they have green hair, and that's not there's not an established reason for that. Like, it's, and everybody acts as though they've always had green hair. So you get the idea, and now that we have the idea of what a retcon is, overwriting previously established information, let's go and establish two very important things about retcons. These are just the two most important details to really take into consideration, because people tend to overlook them all the time when discussing how retcons work. So first of all, point one, retcons are not plot twists. There is a difference. And you would think this would be obvious. Like, plot twists by nature are meant to change our perspective on a story by revealing new information that contradicts what we previously thought was the case. 
You know, that's how a plot twist works. And to take a very simple standard event version of a plot twist, if a character suddenly dies, unexpectedly, that's a plot twist! Oh my goodness, that character died! But it's not a retcon that a character who was previously established to be alive is now dead. <laughs> so see, when you take the word retcon, and it stands for retroactive continuity, because you're going over the continuity and you're being a bit retroactive about it, like, you can also say that the con stands for contradiction, if you want. I mean, it doesn't, but I mean, you could, you could apply that. And you could take that and remember that that's kind of why retcons are retcon. Basically, it's not a retcon if there is a reasonable excuse or reason for why the previously established information was previously established that way. So to, so to, get, so to give a more specific example, as I said, I was going to talk about Star Wars, so now here's the Star Wars original trilogy spoiler. Darth Vader is Luke's father. It's a breathtaking plot twist that nobody saw coming at the time. Because now everybody knows because, you know, we all... We all just spoil it for each other, we're all terrible people. But yeah, at the time that was a groundbreaking plot twist, and it is a plot twist. Because in the first film, in The New Hope, look it's told by Ben. Oh yeah, Darth Vader killed your father. And then, in the next film, Darth Vader reveals, no, I am your father. Oh my goodness, that's a retcon, isn't it? Because it was pretty, you know, we, we were told, we were told that his father was dead, killed by Darth Vader. But when Darth Vader tells him and reveals that he's actually Luke's father, that that contradicts what previously... But there is a reasonable explanation for why the information that we are now receiving contradicts the information we were told before. Quite simply, Obi-Wan lied! Obi-Wan is a liar. Can he trust that guy? Seriously, he's, he's never never quite on the, on the straight and narrow with you. I'm not bashing him. He, he has good reason for trying not to reveal the truth to Luke. And that's typically how a lot of plot twists happen. Because someone's told one thing because the people who tell them the truth are afraid of how they'll react or afraid of what they'll do if they have the truth. They're afraid of the truth and the truth is a scary thing in stories. So it's very convenient for writers to use to hide very key reveal details that they can then use later on to make the audience go <gasps> So, you know, uh, that's the point of a plot twist. Plot twists are meant to be misleading at first and then reveal something that gives you a new perspective on previous events as well as events of the future. They alter the story. They are there to twist the plot. So it is important to make that distinction because yes, sometimes sometimes information does contradict what was previously established. Sometimes there's a plot twist but elements of that plot twist don't entirely add up. Like there is an explanation but it doesn't completely hold up and that's where the line gets really blurry between plot twists and retcons. So you get people calling plot twists retcons when they aren't and that's kind of understandable from a certain point of view. So if I had to highlight a very key difference between retcons and plot twists, it's the difference in consistency. Like that's another word you could say that the con and retcon stands for. Consistency. Because retcons contradict the continuity with inconsistency. That's it in a nutshell. Plot twists are consistent with what we know, and you can wrap your head around them because they do make sense once you know all the information. And the difference is we just didn't have all the information. And once we have all the information, the plot kind of opens up, and that's how the plot twist works. But retcons, retcons change the information. They actively take something that was previously established. I keep saying previously established, but it's really the easiest way to hammer the point across. Retcons change what we knew. They change it. They don't add on to it. Plot twists add on, retcons change. So it's difficult sometimes, but just try to bear that in mind when considering whether something's a plot twist or a retcon. Now he but now here's the second point. The second point when it comes to retcons, and this is really, I cannot stress this enough, this is really the most important thing about retcons. And like, unlike the other thing where, you know, you can have debate over whether or not like retcons <coughs> are Sorry. You can have a bit of debate over how much a retcon is a plot twist or how much a plot twist is a retcon. Like, sometimes the line does get blurry, sometimes the area is grey, and people will just say whatever one they prefer to think because they like it or dislike it. That sucks, but it happens. But, in, but this one is a lot more absolute, okay? Retcons are not bad. Retcons are not bad things, okay? You can make retcons into your story and it's still a good story. I suppose I should say retcons are not inherently bad. Not that they're not always good, just sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. And I think people forget that. There's just this big kind of expectation that a story has to be completely consistent. And consistency is good, but it's not the be all end all crux in what matters when writing a story. If a story is a little bit inconsistent, if there is a retcon here and there, it's not a bad story. 
But a lot of people tend to take that approach. A lot of people tend to think, hey, if the story is inconsistent, then the author hasn't put enough thought into it, and the story is worse because of it. And as I say, it's kind of true, because consistency is good to have. But if a story isn't completely consistent, then that's okay as well, because it's just a lot of work. Writing a story, especially writing a franchise, when a story gets particularly long, particularly long-winded, it can be a lot of effort to try and keep everything in check with what it was before. Typically, retcons exist because they have to exist. Because they open up avenues of how to write more stuff for your stories. So a case example for that could be Harry Potter. Because the way that certain elements in the Harry Potter universe work, things like port keys and love potions, even just some of the potions and spells that you get introduced later in the story, sometimes you look at them and you think, I mean, if that existed, then why weren't they used before? Because as J.K. Rowling writes this longer saga, she has to introduce elements to make the story more interesting and to gradually open up the world a bit and to sort of reintroduce uh, people to new magical elements to keep the story fresh and engaging. But in one or two certain instances, it might just end up opening up a little hole in the plot that wasn't there before because, you know, if time turners are a thing, then, you know, J.K. Rowling kind of feel like wrote herself into a corner with them and tried to, you know, clean that up uh, later on in the series. Yeah, the simple existence of time travel is just a big source of avenue for this kind of problem. But that said, the way a time turner is used at the end of the third book, The Prisoner of Azkaban, I wouldn't trade that out. I wouldn't want to take that out of the story because it's not totally consistent with the rest of the series, or because it makes the world a bit too complicated. I mean, you can debate whether or not that's the case, and maybe it's not, but if it was, it wouldn't be a bad thing. I had my problems with Bleach, and I think that's because sometimes authors make retcons because they want to do something new with the story, and it doesn't work, or it's not worth it. If you undo something that was previously done a certain way just so that you can introduce a new story element that just isn't worth it, just isn't interesting, or is just a waste of time, then it's unsatisfying and it results in a, just an, a less interesting story or a less fun story. So it is possible to go overboard when making retcons, and sometimes retcons are bad. Sometimes they just result in poor writing, sometimes they just result in a bad attempt at a new plotline that doesn't go anywhere or doesn't work as well as it previously did. So it's okay to dislike some retcons, but it's not really okay to dislike all of them. Because if we didn't, if we did away with retcons entirely and had to make the story as consistent as possible, these stories would just be too much for authors to keep in their heads. It would be too much to plan ahead. You cannot be in control of every single detail that <laughs> that a story is made of, and balancing that is just too much work. So it's okay to make changes where necessary, as long as they're small enough that they don't have too big of a t an impact on the continuity, because continuity is important. It is important to make sure that the story feels consistent so that people aren't, you know, being thrown around or screwed over, because that sometimes is how it feels when you're in the audience of a story that just doesn't really treat itself with respect, if that makes sense. So having established that, we've established what retcons are, we've established that they are not plot twists, and we've established that they are not bad, inherently. Let's take a look at Kingdom Hearts. So if I had to list an example of a retcon in Kingdom Hearts that is definitely a retcon, it would be the fact that Donald and Goofy, when they see Yen Sid's tower in Kingdom Hearts 2, they don't recognise it. Donald literally says the line, Master Yen Sid lives here? And then Birth by Sleep establishes that 10 years ago, they were at that exact tower. Like, quite a bit. They kind of spent all their time there, like 10 years ago. And even if it's been 10 years, how could you forget that? How could you forget the sight of the tower? How could you not feel any sense of familiarity? And the games don't really try to explain that. In fact, I'm pretty sure... In fact, I'm pretty sure the director was asked in an interview why that was the case, and he just kind of brushed it off as Yen said having redecorated the place, which is the most flimsy excuse. The bottom line is, it's inconsistent. Donald and Goofy don't recognise a place in this game, but then in a prequel, they are there, so they should recognise it. Unless they had their memories wiped, which has not yet been established, so that could cover up the retcon. Sometimes authors do that. Sometimes there's a retcon and they then write something in later to try and cover it up. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and that's all subjective. That's totally up to you. But yeah, in the case of that, I would say that's a retcon, but it's not really a bad thing. It's okay if Donald and Goofy were initially designed to not know that this was their, where Jens had lived, that they didn't, they weren't familiar with him in that sort of, uh, capacity, but then when they made Birth by Sleep they decided, alright, this is a prequel, this is set ten years beforehand, and we want Donald and Goofy to be here. We want Donald and Goofy to be a part of the story in whatever small way it was. So they had Donald and Goofy there, so they had Donald and Goofy be characters that meet some of the cast. Like, that's okay. That's fine. That's a good thing. And if it's, in, and if it's a little inconsistent, it's not a big deal. It really isn't, and some people make it into a bigger deal than it is, but, but really, retcons aren't usually, like, story breaking, okay? They're just a little inconsistent, and that's okay, as I've tried to repeatedly point out. I get you must be tired of hearing me say that. So having said all that, why don't we look at a couple of uh, examples of Kingdom Hearts events that are considered retcons 
but are absolutely not retcons. So the first one isn't too big of a spoiler, but it is a pretty big one from Kingdom Hearts 2. It turns out that basically this character from Kingdom Hearts 1, who was the main villain, and who everyone knew as Ansem, the Seeker of Darkness, he was not Ansem. Kingdom Hearts 2 reveals that he stole the name Ansem from someone else, and the real Ansem is actually a good guy. He's actually like someone who's like fighting against the same people that our, he our heroes are fighting against, from a more ambiguous standpoint, I think, but that's kind of beside the point, we're all going to get into that. The point is, this changes what we previously knew. We thought that this guy was Ansem, but he's not. His name is actually Xehanort, and he was Ansem's apprentice, so he had a close connection to Ansem, but the Ansem reports we read were actually b written by him, and he stole Ansem's name. He stole his identity, and used it against him, more or less, when he kind of consumed the world with darkness. So Ansem's a bad egg, not just because he's a bad guy in general, but because he identity theft a guy. That's that's a low blow. So that's another bad thing he did, but like, was there a point to it? As in, if this was a retcon, is it really a bad thing? Because a lot of people get offended by this event. The fact that this character isn't named the same. And that's literally all it is, really. It's a name change. And I think it's because Ansem is the ruler of this world, Radiant Garden slash Hollow Bastion. And I think they wanted to make Ansem the ruler of the world, like, into not so much of a villainous character. And I think they wanted to have this kind of relationship between Master and Apprentice, and they wanted the they wanted Xehanort to be something else, they wanted Ansem to be something else. So they made the story work so that Xehanort stole Ansem's identity, and that's why the real Ansem, the ruler of the world, is actually this kind of guy, and Xehanort is this kind of guy. At the end of the day, as a retcon, it really doesn't change much, it's really just like the identity of this particular character, it really is just characters' names. So it's just not that big of a deal in the first place. I mean, I guess this is personal opinion on my part, but I just don't understand why anyone would think that this is that big of a deal, even if it is a retcon. Which, as I'm going to get onto now, it isn't. It's a plot twist, because Sora and the gang are told by Mickey that the guy they thought was Ansem wasn't Ansem. See, the difference is, if Sora and the gang saw that portrait of Xehanort and said, ah, look, it's Xehanort. If they had said when they woke up at the start of Kingdom Hearts 2, see what happened? Oh, so we defeated Xehanort, the apprentice of Ansem, who stole his identity. Like, if they knew that stuff right off the bat, when they didn't, we have never seen them learn that information, that would be a retcon, because how did they learn that stuff? That's inconsistent. If they if they just knew, if they were just calling him Xehanort as though that was always his name, and then they learn later on, oh, there was a guy called Ansem who was the ruler of this world, that's a retcon, because... They were told about Ansem in the first game. They weren't told about Xehanort in the first game. That's inconsistent. That's a retcon. If they believe that was always the case, then that would be a retcon. But it's a plot twist because they believed that was the case. Same as us. We were led to believe that this guy was Ansem. And it turned out he wasn't. And there's nothing inconsistent about that. After all, the guy introduces himself as Ansem, so what reason do they have to doubt him? It's not like they've met him before, it's not like they know what he looks like. It's not like anyone really knows what he looks like. And being in charge of the world for a while after casting out Ansem, Xehanort took measures to try and sort of erase Ansem's existence to some extent. Like, he put up a portrait of himself, for crying out loud. So in Kingdom Hearts 2, even early on in that game, like everybody still thinks that he's Ansem. I mean, the only people who could potentially verify that he's not Ansem, residents of the world such as Leon and Yuffie and that, they probably just never met him, so they maybe just didn't know what he looked like either. It's not like they... I don't think they even saw him in Kingdom Hearts 1, and I don't think Sora and the gang ever addressed the, uh, the portrait of Xehanort was Ansem to Leon or anything. The point is, there's nothing that sort of ties it together, so even if Leon and those people who lived in the world could verify, which we don't know that they could, but if they could verify that it wasn't Ansem, they never really got the opportunity to. The, but Mickey did. Mickey, the moment he had the opportunity, pointed out, because he knew better, because he is someone who had experience. He's someone who knew the, the full story. So what the characters learn isn't inconsistent with what is known and with who knows it, basically. And that's why it's a plot twist, because initially they're led to believe the same thing that we believed because that was what we were told from unreliable sources. That's just how plot twists tend to work sometimes. Remember Ben Kenobi? This is a Ben Kenobi situation. But here's the big one, here's the really big one. The big thing is the actual evidence that we receive is like easily overwritten or easily explained away. And there's nothing that contradicts the facts once they're revealed. So it's, as long as there's no contradiction, it's not a retcon because the continuity is consistent. See where I'm going with that, yeah? Ugh. Oh, my throat's not feeling good, so I hope to end this soon. But we have one, but we do have one more big plot twist to go over, and it's a really big one, and it's one that gets the word retcon thrown at it a lot. So, this is a big one for Dream Drop Distance. Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance reveals, near the end of it, that nobodies do have hearts, or more accurately, nobodies 
can have hearts. See, ever since Kingdom Hearts 2, like, properly introduced nobodies, like, it's always been a big detail that they don't have hearts. That has been hammered into the information of the audience since Kingdom Hearts 2. Pretty much every opportunity. Someone's like, you don't have hearts. Yeah, we don't have hearts. Or we do have hearts, says someone. But they're like, no, you're lying. You don't have hearts. You just pretend to have hearts. That's the kind of stuff that got thrown around a lot in Kingdom Hearts 2. And even in 358 three, over two days, a game that was about nobodies. That, that's a game that's about nobodies, and they continue to reinforce that. We don't have hearts. We don't have hearts to feel these things. We, sh we don't have emotions because we don't have hearts. This stuff gets hammered in a lot across the series, and then Dream Drop Distance comes along and reveals, no, these characters did have hearts. They were nobodies, but they had hearts all along. And this has now been revealed to us here, and people said, no, that's inconsistent. That's a contradiction. That is a retcon. But ex except it's not. It's like the it's like as far from a retcon as it could possibly be in the Kingdom Hearts series. So I'm about to geek out here, and this is where I feel like it's going to get ranty. I feel like if it's not already, it's been quite ranty thus far. I tried not to be, but as I said, I'm kind of expecting it to be. And here we go. <sighs> from the moment. Kingdom Hearts 2 established that nobodies don't have hearts, it has been cast in doubt as much as possible, time after time. The way that characters behave, if they really didn't have hearts, you would not really expect them to take the actions that they take, particularly Axel. He was a massive strong example. Demix at least believes that he has a heart, he does say as much to Sora, maybe he did, maybe he didn't, but he says we do too have hearts. And Sora and the gang are told by Yen Sid that they're just pretending to have hearts, that that's a ruse, but maybe the real ruse is what Yen Sid is saying. Maybe Yen Sid doesn't know better, or maybe Yen Sid does know, but he wants Sora to believe that they don't, they don't have hearts so that fighting the organization is easier. We don't know, but we do know that across the series, the three most authoritative examples of people who have established that nobodies don't have hearts, the people who are the biggest sort of like scientists in their field, who have repeatedly told everybody and anyone uh, who doesn't know as much as them that nobodies don't have hearts, the people who know best, the scientific intelligent people are Xemnas, Ansem, and Yen Sid. And, like I said, Yen Sid, he maybe doesn't know better, or maybe he does, but he's withholding information. Yen Sid, it wouldn't be, the f it wouldn't be far from him to do. He's, he's kind of a plays his cards close to, the, close to the chess guy. He tries to look at the big picture a lot of the time. Xemnas is not trustworthy. He is one of the villains. And it turns out that he wants the organization to believe they don't have hearts so that he can implant them with his own heart. He wants to possess people. He wants to create more copies of himself so that he can achieve his goals of, like, rewriting reality. So, yeah, of course he's not going to tell people that nobody can have hearts. He's keeping that to himself, and he's spreading that misinformation. And the only other person who could contradict that is Ansem, and he says that nobody's don't have hearts, and he continues to devalue them. But the reason he does that is because he's trying to just distance himself from his own immorality. He wants to believe that the nobodies don't have hearts because, you know, it'll make things easier, but he does know better, and he denies it. And he even apologises to Roxas in Kingdom Hearts 2. Why would he bother if he really believes that nobodies don't have any worth or value because they don't have hearts, because they don't have feelings, because they're not meant to exist? He knows better. He's just acting in opposition to that because he knows better. Because he doesn't want to believe it. And when you have characters who deceive the audience, who tell us one thing when they know the other, that's that just allows for a lot of great opportunities for solid writing when it comes to characters with depth to them. Characters who have more layers to how they feel about things than they let on. Characters who hide what they truly believe or what they truly know because they are trying to fulfill their own agenda. That's true enough for uh, Yen Sid, it's definitely true for Xemnas, and Ansem, he's very much that kind of guy. He just wants to try and put aside any evidence that shows that nobodies are more than what they appear, and just focus on his revenge. He was obsessed with revenge in Kingdom Hearts too, so he didn't care about nobodies, and he didn't care who believed what about them. So you know, that's their thing. The, the main source, basically the main sources of information that revealed that nobodies don't have hearts were unreliable. And even then, in Dream Drop Distance, it is established that nobodies don't have hearts. They really don't. When they're born, they don't have hearts. What was really being withheld is that nobodies have the capability of growing hearts. And this is where I think Yen Sid, for all of his intelligence, he probably just didn't know this. Xemnas did because he was a nobody. He could feel it. He could see it. And he could experience it with his group. And Ansem, he's done enough studying to know better and to realise that this was a possibility. And he even says during the Dream Drop Distance Secret Ending, it's not limited to nobodies. Data, puppets, anything can grow a heart if it's given the opportunity, if it has the potential to be nurtured and to grow with relationships with others. That's how hearts work in Kingdom Hearts. And the writers are the ones that write the science in, the, and it has been very consistent about that since Kingdom Hearts 2. 
And this, basically this plot twist, this has been in the making for a long time. And I think particularly from Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix onwards, every game has progressively shown that more and more that it's possible for nobodies to have hearts or have had hearts all along. Even Recoded does this whole thing with data and data characters being capable of growing hearts and capable of having the same capability of emotions that other people have. And if they can do that, why can't nobodies? The logic has always been there, but it's just been, everybody's just been blinded by the fact that the game says that people have said that this is the case and not really taken into consideration the possibility that it's a deliberate misleading thing. And there is a purpose for it. Like I said, Anselm was focused on revenge and Xemnas was trying to manipulate everybody into thinking that that was the case. And at a time when it was no longer consequential whether or not people knew, he reveals to Sora at the end of Dream Drop Distance that nobody's can grow hearts. But the reason that that's not inconsistent isn't just because the people who told us the information before were liars, but also because we've seen it. We had an entire game from the perspective of nobodies going through daily life and we see them have hearts, we see them have emotions, we see characters like Roxas, Axel, Gion, Namine, all these nobodies, they do a lot of stuff and they have a lot of emotional expression that shows that they are more than just heartless beings. I mean, just Roxas in general, Roxas is a character, he is the epitome of Nobody's can have hearts. And people did think for a while that the reason for that was because he has Ven's heart in him, and I think that is the case, and that allowed him to feel in the way that other nobodies couldn't. But there's no excuse for people like Axel and Gion. But he does start life as a zombie with no memories to rely on to form any sense of identity. So he's not that different in terms of how he acts and behaves. And I'm not sure, like it's really not certain, it's just the theory that Ven's heart had any real effect on his ability to feel. And I mean, if that's the case for him, then it's def there's definitely no excuse for Gion and Axel. Axel in particular is just like, the biggest case study of how he goes from being someone who deliberately says a lot that he doesn't have a heart and he shows it from time to time as well. But every so often he laughs, he gets angry and even later on in Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix he cries. Every every nobody that the series focused on has actually shed tears at some point and Sora makes that explicitly clear in Dream Drop Distance as though it wasn't already kind of obvious if you just think about it. Crying is like the ultimate expression of emotion and these characters are expressing that. Like, laughing is something you can fake, crying not so much. Especially in such genuine situations as the loss of a friend. So the Kingdom Hearts series has been doing this little thing called foreshadowing for the longest time. They've been foreshadowing this plot twist. This has been set up for a long time and it's been established to make players doubt whether or not nobody's have hearts or not. And now we know that it is possible for them to obtain them through growth and we have seen that growth, so it is not inconsistent. Therefore, it is not a retcon. Okay, I think that's my rant over. That's, that was just, that, I just really had to get that out of my system. That's kind of, it's kind of half the reason why I'm making this video. The other half is, of course, the subject of retcons in itself, because it does bother me, no matter what it is, when people misapply this. I mean, I've seen it get used on Ruby a lot of the time, when something's not a retcon, or it is, but it's not that big of a deal and that kind of thing. I like Ruby, and it's had like a bumpy road, I think, sometimes when it comes to the story writing, but for the most part, it's really good and really consistent. There was one, I wouldn't name names, but there was this one guy on YouTube who actually said that the existence of nobodies were a retcon in themselves. Like, the fact that they exist in the Kingdom Hearts series, like, is inconsistent with Kingdom Hearts 1, or maybe Chain of Memories, or both. Because, like, if nobody's existed, because nobody's get introduced in Kingdom Hearts 2, but, like, if they exist, why haven't we heard about them before? Like, because they're not meant to be around in Kingdom Like, their existence is not a retcon. It's not inconsistent. We never see them in Kingdom Hearts 1, just they weren't there. Th that's not a big deal. We don't even see them too much in Kingdom Hearts 2 unless you're personally dealing with the organization. And key, key, key word there, organization. The nobodies are organized, so they keep out of sight of Sora and the gang. They keep to the shadows and focus on their own agenda. They're not out to go and about take, taking over worlds or destroying things like the Heartless are. They're planning, they're doing things, they have their own agenda. And if that doesn't take them into the path of Sora or whatever, then whatever. To introduce an entire, I mean, you could call it species, I guess, in a series, like, as long as you have good enough reason to establish why they hadn't been around before, that's fine. And Kingdom Hearts has enough, at least when it comes to nobodies. They are native to the realm of in-between anyway, and Sora spends most of his time in the realm of light in Kingdom Hearts 1. So yeah, retcons are not plot twists. But even if they were, they're not bad. That nobody's having hearts thing, that, that is perfect. The whole series has been building up to that, and thank goodness it has. Because finally we're getting validation that these characters that we love have had reason to be the way they are. They're not just misbehaving on out of uh, some sort of make-believe mind principle. They 
do have hearts. They are reacting instinctively because they have the feelings that they express. And that makes them so much more real than they thought they were. Which is just such a good story. It's a tragic story, but it's such a good story. So yeah, just to reiterate, even if it was a retcon, it's a fantastic change to the story. And, it, and it's part of the reason why Kingdom Hearts 3 even has a plot, you know? Because part of the story is gonna be rescuing them, giving them, like, the lives that they were denied, even though they're rightly entitled to, because they have hearts. They have their own sense of worth and identity. And that matters. And Kingdom Hearts shows that that matters, and that that's just a solid message to sort of run out the series on, at least this saga, you know? People matter. If you have a heart, if you have feelings, then you matter. And if you don't, then you don't. Apply to real-life context, everybody has a heart, so it's basically a way of saying everybody matters. I don't know, maybe I'm being a bit silly there, but I mean, now's the part where you say whatever you think about this whole, this whole thing. I mean, I've ranted for long enough, goodness knows how uh, long I've been doing this, uh, and how long the video will be, but look, if you, um, do you have any thoughts on that? Anything you want to discuss about that? If you have any examples of retcon or uh, plot twist, and just be careful if you're doing that, you know, please. Tag your spoilers, let people know if you're about to spoil something that other people haven't seen yet. It's only fair. And it's nice. Let's all be decent human beings. Let's all have a heart, shall we? Okay. So yeah, thoughts, discussions, anything you disagree with when it comes to me, or do you think I was on the money? I think I am on the money, personally. I mean, I know I'm biased, I am me after all, but the whole term retcon is gonna lose meaning if people just keep misusing it and applying it to any plot twist or event that they don't like. So, you know, that's me pretty much done. Just, you know, have a good day, y'all, and uh, Use the word retcon responsibly. Anyway, I'm glad I got that out of my system. I wish I could get this uh, <coughs> cough out of my system, but uh, I'll get there. <laughs>